Since the tragedy of 9-11, the Patriot Act, along with several executive orders authorized by our government, demonstrate the potential for devastating our fundamental liberties. The very rights and freedoms that our government professes to be protecting in their fight against terrorism. While pursuing the war on terrorism, the President and our Attorney General Ashcroft have demonstrated a stunning contempt for America's democratic tradition of separation of powers and of the sanctity for due process under the law. In considering the thematic question of today's conference, how are human rights being defined or violated by current policy and practices, we are confronted with the very real tangible evidence that this new set of laws and regulations pose to the very underpinnings that guarantee our nation's high standard of human rights protections. Repeatedly, the administration has assumed additional powers without congressional approval or even consultation. And most importantly, it has sought against, it has sought to reduce respect for the role of the judiciary as a safeguard against the overreaching by other, the other two branches of government. The new laws have greatly expanded the powers of the executive branch in a manner without precedent in our history, while at the same time accelerating the stripping of the courts of their time-honored tradition of judicial review. In short, the administration is conducting a war against terrorism while treating the courts as an inconvenient obstacle to executive action, rather than the essential check and balance they have been for almost 225 years in American history. The framers of the Constitution knew the danger of combining powers in the hands of a single person, even one who is elected, as James Madison, the architect of our constitutional democracy, explained, quote, the accumulation of all powers, legislative, ex executive, and judiciary, in the same hands, may justly be pronounced the very definition of tyranny, unquote. Let me go on now and give some background and some hep to what is contained in the Patriot Act and also uh, describe some of the other assaults on our civil liberties. With great haste and in secrecy, and in the name of the war on terrorism, Congress passed the USA Patriot Act, which is an, an acronym for uniting and strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism. <laughs> the new law gives the executive branch, <clears throat> excuse me, the new law gives the executive branch sweeping new powers that fundamentally undermine the Bill of Rights and are unnecessary to keep us safe. Soon after the tragic September 11th terrorist attacks, Attorney General John Ashcroft sent to Congress a proposal containing the Justice Department's wish list for increased police powers with little or no judicial oversight. The 342-page USA Patriot Act was passed on October 26, 2001 at approximately 2.30 2 a.m. in the morning with little debate by Congress most of whom did not even read the bill, handing Ashcroft virtually all of the surveillance tools he wanted and several more he had not requested. The following day, the Washington office of the American Civil Liberties Union was deluged by calls from <coughs> congressional staffers asking, what did we pass last night? Time does not permit me to give a full accounting of all the threats to our rights, so here's a brief overview. Be forewarned, even if you are not suspected of a crime, it is now legal for the federal government to engage in the following actions. Sections 411 and 412 of the Act authorize indefinite detentions. 
These sections of the law appear to violate the Fourth Amendment, which forms the substantial basis of the constitutional right to privacy, and the Sixth Amendment, guaranteeing due process under the law. Under new definitions relating to terrorism, the Secretary of State can now designate any foreign or domestic group that has engaged in a violent activity a terrorist organization. By lowering the standard for terrorist designation, it is now possible that groups who dissent peacefully could be de designated terrorist as the result of an action by an agent provocateur. provocateur. Further, the Patriot Act permits the Attorney General to incarcerate or detain non-citizens based on mere suspicion of association with terrorist activities and to deny readmission to the U.S. of non-citizens, including legal, long-term permanent residents, for engaging in speech protected by the First Amendment. By giving the Attorney General broad powers to certify immigrants as risks, the law reduces the previous standard from probable cause. Suspects convicted of no crime may be detained indefinitely in six-month increments without meaningful judicial review. This clearly infringes upon the rights to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state, to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with witnesses against him, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. In the aftermath of September 11th, the government arrested and detained more than 1,200 people, most of whom were charged with minor immigration offenses. In an act of group stereotyping, more commonly known as racial profiling, and reminiscent of the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, nearly everyone caught up in the dragnet was young, male, and Muslim. Additionally, thousands of men mostly of Arab and South Asian origin, have been held in secretive federal custody for weeks and months, sometimes without any charges filed against them. The government has refused and continue to, continues to refuse to publish their names and whereabouts, even when ordered to do so by the courts. Moreover, 8,000 Arab and South Asian immigrants have been interrogated because of their religion or ethnic background, not because of actual wrongdoing. More than two years later, the government has still refused to identify the people it arrested. Along with other civil rights groups, the ACLU has sued the government under the Freedom of Information Act to get the names of the detainees. The reason is simple. As one New Jersey court recently explained, quote, secret arrests are odious to a democratic society. In a report issued this past summer, the Justice Department's own investigator general has condemned the way in which the FBI, in collaboration with the INS, has conducted these detentions. Not content with arresting people in secret, the government has also begun to try people in secret. Under a new government policy, more than 600 secret deportation proceedings have already taken place. The press, the public, and even family members are excluded whenever the Attorney General decides that he would rather not have anyone watching immigration, court hearings, and the courts are ordered to keep secret even that the hearings are